Hi, it's Chris. In this video, we're going to show you how to remove and replace the rear bearing and shaft in your GE dryer. Replacing the bearing and shaft in your GE dryer is a fairly easy job to do. You're going to have to remove a few components on the dryer, the front, remove the drum itself, and then just disassemble the rear bearing and install a new one. Keep in mind if your machine needs to be repaired, it's usually simple enough to do it yourself. Visit PartSelect.com, enter your model number, and quickly find and order the part you need. So one of the main reasons you'll be looking at replacing this drum shaft bearing is just a matter that it's a natural, normal wearing item, and over time the bearing will wear out, and if you wait too long to change it after that bearing's got some wear, it's going to start to wear into the shaft, so you need to replace the assembly itself. So the first thing we're going to want to do is, of course, think about some safety. So we're going to want to disconnect our power for sure. So you can either unplug the cord to your dryer, or if you don't have a cord, if it's hardwired in, you're going to want to go to your fuse panel, turn off your circuit breakers, or if you have fuses, remove your fuses. So the next thing we're going to want to do is to remove the top on this dryer, and that gives us the ability to access some screws so that we can remove the front so we can get at the internals. We're just going to open the door. So now that we have the door open, we're able to locate the screws that hold the top on, and there's just, on this machine, just one in each corner. Now that the screws are removed, we're able to lift the top off. We'll set that to one side. So now that we have the top off, we're just going to remove the two screws that are coming in from this direction that hold the front on. So there, now we have one screw out, we'll take the one out in the other corner. Now I'm going to keep a little bit of pressure on the front, uh, pushing it towards the cabinet, because once the screw comes out, this whole front piece is going to want to come forward. And if you're not aware that's what's about to happen, then the whole front could basically just fall right off onto the floor. With those two screws removed, we can now remove the front from the dryer. Hold the top edge of the drum and pull the front forward. Now that the front is released, we can see that there's a couple of wires that, that come through from the wiring harness and connect to the door switch. And we're going to want to remove those. With the wires disconnected, we can now lift the front right off the dryer. And we'll set that over here. So our next step is going to be to remove the drum itself. And to do that, we have to release the tension that's on the belt. So to do that, we're just going to reach in from underneath the dryer drum on both sides. And I'm just going to take hold of the idler pulley, release the tension by pulling it over off the belt, slipping the belt off the motor pulley, and then I'll be able to take the drum out. Now, um, if you're familiar with doing these, you know where things are, but if it's your first time or you're just learning to do this sort of thing, keep in mind that a lot of the metal edges inside here are fairly sharp, so you'll want to either wear gloves or just be very careful as you reach in so that you don't cut yourself. So now that I've released the tension on the belt, so it's no longer around the motor or idler pulley, I'm able to use that belt as a little bit of a, a handle and allows me to just Take control of the dryer drum. And pull that drum right out of the dryer itself. So to replace the bearing, we need to remove the three screws that are holding it in place. And to do that, we're going to go from the inside of the drum. So these are Torx T20s, and you just have to unthread them. And take them right out. So with the screws removed, you can pull that bracket right off. So you'll also notice, and this is pretty common with this style of GE dryer, is there'll always be a whole bunch of lint that's held in place between the drum itself and that inner shield. 
So now that we have the screws taken out to release the bearing, it releases that shield. So this is the ideal time to take that shield out, clean that lint out of there. So now that we have that all cleaned out, we can set this back in place and we'll mount our bearing. To make mounting your bearing easier, you may notice that the holes where the screws will be going into are not threaded. So this becomes very awkward when you go to try and mount it and thread those screws in from reaching around the drum. So just take one of the screws, put it into place and pre-thread all three holes. So now that we've tapped those holes out, it's going to be really easy to mount this bearing. We're just going to bring it up into place on the screws and then reach around from the inside of the drum and thread them on. And there we go. So now that we have the bearing mounted and the screws put in really, really tight, as tight as you can get them, really we're at a position now where we're going to be looking to actually put the drum back into the dryer. So to install the drum, the first thing I typically do is I'll put the belt around the drum. And the belt has two sides, a smooth side and a rib side. You'll always want to make sure that the rib side is down touching the drum itself. So you'll notice on your drum, there's typically a mark where the belt normally rides. So that's your guide when you go to put your belt on your drum as to where you want to start it with. So now again, using my belt as a handle, I'm going to use it to help me assist in putting the drum in. So what we'll be looking to do when we set the drum in is to line up that bearing so that it goes into the center of that heater housing. Now again, using the belt as a handle, I'm just going to raise the tub. I'm just going to let it push its way down in between the sides of the cabinet. And now I'm just going to bring that drum in as level as I can. So we just support the drum so that that center bearing is pretty much level and you'll feel it drop right into place. Now that it has, we just again line up our belt onto the marks on the drum where it used to live. Now that we're all set, what we're going to look to do is take the belt, put it around the motor pulley, slip it underneath the idler, and then lift that idler bracket off of that motor mount, and the pulley will then come in and tighten that belt. There, belt is on, and things turn, so that's good. I'm just going to take the front and there's little pins down in either corner that go into the slots. So now we'll just bring our wires up, put them on the appropriate terminal. And they should go on nice and snugly. If they don't, you're just going to want to take a little pair of your needle nose pliers and just squeeze the terminal a little bit so that when it goes on, it's nice and snug. There we go. Now just slip the cover back over to protect the wires. So we're just going to bring that up in place. We'll lift our drum a little bit to ease the lip of the drum over the bearings. And then I just need to put my two screws in. Now it's just a matter of putting the top back on. top on we just put our two screws in one up in this right hand corner just give the drum a little turn and it's just that easy to replace the bearing and shaft in your GE dryer